everyone, I'm Rachel from Evelyn and Peter. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have this super cute crochet cardigan for you guys for my first pattern of 2022. So here is the design. I am so excited for this one. I've gotten such amazing feedback from you guys on this design and it's got to be my most favorite cardigan that I've made so far so I hope you guys love it um, the pattern is for sizes extra small through 5x and then the free pattern is available on my blog enpcrochet.com and I'll have that linked in the descriptions for you guys um, it's also available as a kit with lion brand and the kit comes with all the yarn that you need um, and then the PDF digital pattern and then of course you can switch out the yarn colors if you want as well um, I'm using Lion Brands Heartland and Petrified Forest. Um, let's see, I have the printable versions of the pattern available on Etsy and Ravelry, so you can go and purchase that if you prefer that prefer it over the blog version. And then, of course, this is the full video tutorial where I will walk you through step-by-step step how to make this cardigan. So hopefully, even if you are a beginner, you'll be able to do this as well. Um, let's see in the, in the video, I am making a size small, so you will want to follow along with the written pattern version. If you're, especially if you're making another size, but I just recommend it no matter what to just follow along on my blog with the written pattern. Um, because of course, if you're making a different size, you'll have different stitch counts and row counts and all of that. I do my best in the video to tell you, um, how much you'll be using for the size small, but just in case you're making a different size, it's super easy to follow along if you are reading the pattern as you go. Um, but yeah, it's super easy to make. All the panels are worked bottom up and once you get the hang of the cute little bead stitch that this pattern uses, it is a breeze. I know when you see puff stitches or bobble stitches or something like that, you think that it's going to take forever and I promise it really doesn't take that long. I don't know if it's because this one was so fun to make, but I actually worked it up really quickly. Um, and I hope you guys just love this pattern as much as I do. And I have a pullover version coming soon in this as well. So be on the lookout for that. Um, and let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them But I hope you enjoy this pattern and I will catch you guys in the next tutorial So for this pattern you're going to need worsted weight yarn I'm using line brands heartland yarn in the color petrified forest and all of the exact yardage information for all nine sizes is available Free on my blog in the written pattern if you want to go check that out And then you're also going to need a five millimeter crochet hook a pair of scissors a yarn needle and a measuring tape I also recommend some stitch markers as well so we're going to be starting off with the ribbing and the ribbing is exactly the same for the back panel and the front panels and the sleeves as well so begin with a slip knot and then just go ahead and insert your hook and pull tight so I'm just going to show you a quick little swatch of the ribbing um, and this is what you'll be doing for all of those panels so you can begin by chaining two and then we're going to be doing a foundation single crochet for this first row. If you do not want to do a foundation single crochet, you can always chain 11 and work one single crochet in the second chain from the hook and back down. But if you're doing this foundation single crochet, you're going to rotate these two chains and insert your hook into the back bump of the first chain that you made. And then just yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first loop, and then yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. And this is one foundation single crochet. And then again, you're gonna insert your hook into the bottom of that stitch that you just made and repeat that same exact thing. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. You're gonna do this a total of 10 times. And you can see as I'm going that it's creating these little V's on the bottom of the stitches. And that's where you'll be putting your hook um, for each stitch following the next one. So you can see them here. And you just put your hook, make sure you're going underneath both of those loops and work the foundation single crochet. Again, if you're not comfortable with this, you can just chain 11 and then work your 10 single crochet, which is your first row. But but this kind of just combines the starting chain and the first row together so it's just 10 foundation single crochet to complete row one of the ribbing So 
So once you have your 10, you can make sure that you have the correct amount. Just go back and double check. And then we're going to be starting row two. So we just chain one and turn our work. And now row two is what you're going to be doing for the rest of the ribbing. So you're just gonna be repeating this. And the very first stitch, you're going to be inserting your hook into the back loop only. So in the loop that's furthest away from you, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So we're just working single crochet stitches into each stitch all the way across working in the back loop only. So again, the back loop is the one furthest away from you. Make sure you're not putting it in the front loop or in both loops, you just wanna put it in the back loop. And then for the rest of the ribbing, you're just going to be repeating this row. If you're following along with the written pattern, then that has the exact row counts. This is the back panel. So I'm making a size small and I will have a total of 74 rows. So this completes row two. And now for the next 72 rows for a total of 74, you're just going to be chain one, turn your work, and then work your single crochets in the back loop only all the way across. So do this for your back panel. And then again, I just wanna point out it's the same thing for the front panels as well. But I'm considering this part the back panel. Um, um, and in this next clip, you'll see that mine is just a little miniature version because I'm going to just be showing you a quick swatch and then show you what it looks like all worked up as the back panel. So again, depending on what size you made, you'll have a different amount of rows. Here's my little swatch of the ribbing and this is what your ribbing should look like all worked up in the back panel. Again, I made the size small and I have a total of 74, but that'll change depending on what size you made. But this is about how long yours will be. And now I'll show you guys how to do the main body of the back panel, which is just alternating a couple of rows and creating that bead stitch. Um, so I'll be showing you that here as well. So go back and double check your row count, make sure you have the right amount for your size, and now we'll move on to row one of the main body of the back panel. Okay, so now we're starting row one, and for this row, we're just going to be working into the ends of the rows of the ribbing. So do not chain for this row. We're just gonna start off with one single crochet into that the very end of that last ribbing row we just did, and then work a single crochet into the end of the next row, a third single crochet into the end of the row after that, and just do this all the way across. So you should be working one stitch per ribbing row. So because you're working into the ends of the rows, you're not working into an actual stitch. So it might be a little difficult at first, but it really doesn't matter where you're putting your hook. I like to go down just a little bit to make sure it's nice and secure into the ends of that, into the ends of the rows and just do this all the way across. The most important thing is that you just have one single crochet per ribbing row when you get to the end. Um, your stitch count should be exactly the same as the amount of rows that you have as well. So I'm gonna be finishing off this row one with 74 single crochet for the back panel. So after row one, you can go ahead and turn your work and we're going to be starting row two. So for row two, you're gonna begin by chaining three and this chain three does count as a double crochet. From here and throughout the rest of the pattern, this very first chain three counts as our first stitch of the row. So you know not to work a double crochet into that very same one. You'll work your first double crochet into the stitch directly after that. So we have two double crochets right here. And then now we're going to be doing the little bead stitch, um, which will be throughout the rest of the pattern. So after you make that double crochet into the very next stitch, we're going to yarn over, insert our hook around the post of the double crochet that we just made, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, insert it around the post again, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, insert it around again, yarn over, pull up a loop, and you should have seven loops on your hook, and then yarn over, pull through the first six loops on your hook only so that you have two loops remaining, and then yarn over and pull through those final two. So it's basically like making a little puff stitch around the post of our double crochet stitch. 
And after every bead stitch that you make, you skip the stitch right after it and work your next double crochet after that skipped stitch. So you can see I have the bead and then I skipped a stitch and then I worked a double crochet. And then you just do the same exact um, puff stitch around the current post of the current double crochet that you're working on. So you loop it around until you have a total of seven loops on your hook, then yarn over, pull through the first six loops on your hook, and then yarn over, pull through the final two loops. So again, that's one bead stitch, and then you skip the next stitch, and then work your double crochet into the stitch after that. So you know every time that you do the bead stitch, you wanna skip the stitch after it, and you're just gonna continue this all the way across the row. So you're gonna be working your bead stitch, skipping a stitch, work your bead stitch, skip a stitch, all the way across until you get to the end of the row, and then I'll show you how to finish that row off. Okay, so once you get to the end of the row, you have two stitches remaining. And again, that very next stitch right after our puff, um, we skip that. So technically we have one stitch remaining and you just finish off the row by working one double crochet into the very last stitch. So that finishes off the row. It's super simple and you'll be using this row um, throughout the rest of the pattern. And for the rest of this panel, you're going to be doing a row two and three repeat. So that was row two and you will be using this throughout the rest of the back panel. So I'll show you guys how to do row three, and then after that, you just repeat row two and three over and over. So you can go ahead and turn your work, and we're gonna start off row three by chaining three. And again, this chain three start counts as our first double crochet, so don't work your stitch into the same spot as that chain three. And then for the rest of the row, you just work double crochet stitches all the way across. So in the very next space, you can work your first double crochet and then do it all the way across the row, working one double crochet per stitch till you get to the very end. I wanted to point out when you get towards the end of the row that you don't accidentally skip this last stitch. And I apologize for the blurriness of the camera. I'm not quite sure what happened here at this part of the video. But again, make sure you don't skip the stitch above the puff. And then your last stitch of the row is going to be worked into the top of the starting chain because that chain three counted as our first stitch. That means your last double crochet of the row will be worked into the top of that chain three. And then your stitch count will be the same as it was in row one so I have a total of 74 double crochet stitches and our stitch count is not going to change throughout the entirety of the back panel. So from here on out it's just a repeat of rows two and three until you reach the correct amount of rows for your size. So we're going to be starting off row four and it's just a row two repeat and then row five will be a row three repeat so we're just alternating between um, bead rows and double crochet rows. Don't forget that your chain three counts as a stitch and don't forget that your last stitch of the row will be worked into the chain three. So when I do my next bead stitch row, my last stitch will be worked into the top of the chain three of this current double crochet row. So just continue going and repeating rows two and three until you have the correct amount of rows for your size. So for the size small, I have a total of 35 rows and that'll change depending on what size you're making. And you can also add or take away rows as well. Um, it's not gonna mess with the pattern if you decide you want yours a little bit longer or a little bit shorter. Just make sure that you add or remove them in multiples of two. And then you can see here is my finished back panel. So go ahead and work your rows until you have the correct amount. And then I will meet you guys back here and show you how to do the front panels. So the front panels are made exactly how the back panel is made. It's just going to be shorter. So 
Follow along with the written pattern to see how many rows you need of the ribbing. And then if you need a reminder, you can go back in this video and rewatch how I showed you in the swatch making the back panel. So it's the exact same way you do the 10 foundation single crochet, and then you work your ribbing rows for as many rows as your size calls for. I'm making the size small, so I have a total of 32 ribbing rows, and then you work row one just as you did in the back panel by working one single crochet into the end of each row, and then you ro work rows two and three exactly the same as well with a bead stitch row and then a double crochet row, and then you're going to repeat that until you have a total of 10 rows. So go ahead and pause the video and work up your first front panel until you are at your 10th row. And then this is the point where we will be making a hole for the pocket. So we will be starting that on row 11 and I'm going to show you how to do that here. But make sure you go ahead and work up all the way to the point that I am in this video before continuing on. Okay, so for row 11, it's a double crochet row. So we're going to start off as normal by chaining three. This counts as our first double crochet. And then you're going to work your next double crochet into the very following stitch. And you're going to do this until you have a total of your chain three and six more double crochet for a total of seven double crochet. So go ahead and work your double crochet stitches until you have a total of seven. Again, this is for the size small, so if you're making a different size, your stitch count will be slightly different, so just be aware of that and follow along in the written pattern. But I have a chain three and then six more double crochet for seven, and then we're going to create the pocket hole. Now this pocket hole will be the same size for all the sizes. So what you're going to do is chain 18 and then we will be skipping over the next 18 stitches of the row. And so you're going to want to find that seventh stitch on the other side or whichever the amount of stitches is for your size. And that's where you'll be working your next stitch into. So you can put a stitch marker in there if you want to, to help um, keep your spot or you can just count as you go. So just go ahead and yarn over and pull through the loop on your hook a total of 18 times. So when you're doing your chains here, make sure you are not pulling your work tight. You want to keep these chains relatively loose um, so that your work doesn't pucker and pull too tightly. So you can see as I'm going, I'm keeping my hook loose and I'm not pulling down or making these chains snug. So just be aware of that as you go. And if you notice that yours look a little bit too tight, you can always pull them back out and redo it. So just make sure that they are a decent size chain and you're being aware of your tension. So once you have the 18 chains, you can skip the next 18 stitches of the row below and then just work your first double crochet into the following stitch after your skipped double crochets. So just yarn over your hook and work your double crochet as normal. Insert your hook into the stitch and then finish off your double crochet. So just yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And you can see it's created the little hole for the pocket. And then when we attach the pocket to the back of the sweater, you will be sewing it into that chain link that we just made. So be aware of that. And then you are just going to continue the rest of the row by working one double crochet into each stitch all the way across. So your pocket should be even. You should have the same amount of stitches on each side. So I have seven in, on one side and then I'm finishing off with seven on this other side. So once you get to the end, make sure you don't skip that last chain three. And then you can just go ahead and turn your work and continue on um, with the row as normal. So the next row is gonna be a bead stitch row. And when you're working those stitches, you're gonna be working them directly into the chains that we just made. So make sure you're not putting them into um, the pocket hole. Make sure you're working your double crochet into the actual chain. So you're gonna start off your row by chaining three and then continuing on with your bead stitch as normal. And then I'll fast forward here so you guys can see me working the stitch into the chain. 
Okay, so now we're coming up to the pocket hole. So I'll show you really quick how to do this part. Make sure that you're not messing up the stitch count here. It can be a little bit confusing at the starts and ends of the um, chain space where your last stitch is. So just don't accidentally skip one. And then you're gonna just keep going with your um, bead stitches as normal. Here I am putting my hook into the actual chain and then just continue on as you have been. There's my double crochet, and then continue with your bead stitch. So you're just gonna do this all the way across, skipping the chain, just treating it like a normal stitch as you would with any of the other rows. And then you're just gonna keep going, repeating rows two and three over and over again to finish the front panel. There's no more shaping or anything like that in this panel. So continue repeating rows two and three until you have the correct amount of rows. It will be the same amount of rows that you have in the back panel. So this is the size small and I will be working 35 rows total for this front panel. And then you need to go back and remake this front panel again. So you need two of the exact same panels so once you finish this one tie off and make sure you leave a long strand for sewing and then you can go back and rework the same exact thing and I will meet you back here okay so now I'm at the end of my front panel and this is what yours should look like as well and now I'm just gonna tie off and I'm gonna make sure that I leave a long tail um, to sew this last row of the front panel to the last row of the back panel and just make sure you do these on both of the panels when you tie off that you just leave a nice length for sewing. Okay, so now we're going to be sewing our front panels to the back panel. You want to lay your back panel down in front of you with the right side facing up. And the right side is row two. So row one is the wrong side. Row two is the right side. And you want your back panel facing up and your front panels facing right side down so that the right sides are facing. An easy way to check that is you can see these little bead stitches here. They have a little strand on the right and that is the wrong side of the project. So to the right of the bead stitch, there's these strands. You want those facing up and then the back panel one facing down. So you can start off on either side that you want. Just make sure the right sides are still facing and you can either use a yarn needle or um, your crochet hook to join. I'm going to use my crochet hook and slip stitch across. So I'm just putting my hook into the very first stitch of both of the panels. So on that very edge stitch is where you want to insert your hook. And then we're just going to be slip stitching in each stitch across. So you can see my hook here is lined up. And then just yarn over and pull through both of those stitches. And then insert your hook in the next stitch in both panels and then yarn over, pull through and pull through the loop on your hook. And then you're just going to do this all the way across until you have completed all of the stitches on the front panel. Make sure you're not pulling too tightly so that you don't pucker your work. And if you're using your mattress or if you're using your needle, you can mattress stitch or use whichever preferred stitch that you want to do the same thing. And then when you get to the end here, you can just yarn over and pull through the loop on your hook to tie off. Make sure you're not skipping that very last stitch. And then you're just going to repeat the same exact thing on the other side. So depending on which side you started on first, you'll notice that one of the tails from your front panel is on the opposite side because both of them are laying right sides together. So for this one, you're just going to have to make sure that you count in the correct number of stitches that you have on the front panel. You'll want to count in those same stitches on the back panel and that's where you will be putting your hook um, for the very first stitch in the corner. Okay, so now we're going to be doing the sleeves and for the sleeves they start off the exact same way as the back panel and the front panels start off with a slip knot and then you can either chain 11 and work your 10 single crochet or you can do like I'm doing here and chain two and work your 10 foundation single crochet for the first row. So again, just rotate and work your hook into that back bump of the first chain and then yarn over, pull up a loop yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. That's one foundation single crochet. And just do this a total of 10 times.
Once you have your 10 foundation single crochet, you're gonna just do the same thing. Chain one, turn your work, work one single crochet in the back loop only in every single stitch across, and then just repeat that for the remainder of the ribbing of the sleeves. I have a total of 28 rows for the size small while making the sleeves, but your row count will be different depending on which size that you're making. Okay, so now I have the ribbed cuff created for the sleeve, and at this point is where it's gonna be slightly different than the front and back panel, but it's super simple. Instead of working one single crochet into the end of each row, you're going to be working two single crochets into the end of each row. So in that very first row where we finished our last stitch of the row, you're gonna work two single crochet into it, and then work two single crochet into the row right after that and then two single crochet into the third row. So you have six single crochet at this point. So you're just going to be increasing with each row. So instead of just one, one single crochet per row, you're gonna be doing two single crochet per row. And it's gonna look a little bit crazy and a little bit wavy, but don't worry, it's supposed to look like that. Just keep going until you get to the very end of the row. Okay, and at the end of row one, I have a total of 56 single crochet stitches. So it's gonna look crazy, it's gonna look wavy, it's gonna look weird, and it's supposed to look like that, so don't worry about it at all. You have the you have twice the amount of stitches as you do rows. So we've just doubled our um, stitch count from the row count. And after that, you're just gonna continue on like you had been for the back panel and the front panels. So for row two, you just chain three and treat it exactly how you did with the back panel and the front panels. This is our bead stitch row. So in the very following stitch is where you're gonna work your next double crochet and then continue with the bead stitch. So just keep going till you get to the end of the row and then I will show you guys what it looks like um, at the end and how yours is supposed to look. Okay, so that's the end of row two for the sleeve, and I have a total of 27 little bead stitches, and it's still going to be wavy and crazy looking for the next several rows before it starts to um, straighten out a little bit. So for row three, you're just going to turn your work and continue the double crochet stitch row as normal. So just work one double crochet stitch into each stitch across, and then for the rest of the sleeve, you just repeat rows two and three over and over. So I'll be making 21 rows for the size small. And again, it's just gonna depend on what size you're making. So you need to reference the pattern and check how many rows that you will need for your size. And just continue to repeat these two rows. And then you're going to need to make a second sleeve as well. So after you have this first one made, go back and do the same thing all over again for a second sleeve. Make sure when you're tying off that you leave a length of yarn to sew the last row of your sleeve to the front and back panels of your sweater. So just make sure you leave a little bit of length to sew across. So once you have both sleeves complete, now we're going to be seaming them to the sweater. So you'll wanna lay your main sweater, the front and back panels, wrong side up. So you can see that the seam here is facing up. And then you're also gonna want to lay the sleeve wrong side up as well. And then you can kind of lay it across. What you're gonna wanna do is make sure that the seam right here is in the very center of the sleeve. So depending on how many stitches you have um, in the last row of your sleeve, you're gonna wanna split that in half and then just make sure that it's lined up perfectly with the seam so that it's even on both sides. You can fold it to check and then just kind of count in and make sure that you have the correct amount on both sides. And then I also recommend using a stitch marker here. You don't have to if you have experience sewing and you think you can do it, but I always find it easier to use my stitch markers just to hold everything in place as we sew across. Um, another good way to check is to make sure that you have the same amount of bead stitch rows on the same, um, on both ends of the sleeve as well. So we just wanna try and center it as close to the middle as possible before joining. And then I ended up just putting a stitch marker in the very last stitch of the sleeve and into the very last row on the panel to just keep everything in place. 
Once you have everything lined up, you can just go ahead and use the tail of yarn that you left on your sleeve, and then you can either use your needle and stitch across, or you can do the same thing that I did, which was use my hook and slip stitch across. So just make sure that when you put your hook in to the panels of your sweater that you're putting it in in the right spot. And then because you're working it into the sides of rows and not into an actual stitch, you can just kind of find a spot where it's most comfortable for you to put your hook and then line it up evenly with the first stitch of the sleeve and then just slip stitch in and then continue on with the second and the third and just do this all the way across. So make sure you're not pulling too tightly. So just keep your tension loose, but not too loose. And then again, when you're working it into the sides of the panels, you're not going into an actual stitch. You're going into the ends of the rows. I like to put mine, um, wiggle my hook through the actual stitch to kind of make it more secure. So you can see, I'm just kind of sticking my hook in wherever it lines up with the stitch across and then just slip stitch together. And then if you're using your stitch markers, this will help keep everything in place as you go. You can always pull it back out if you see that you need to move some of the stitches a little bit, and then just do this all the way across the row until you get to your stitch marker. And when you get to the end, you can just go ahead and tie off, so just yarn over and pull through. So after you have it seamed along the shoulder, we're going to have to seam across the length of the arm and then down the body of the sweater. So you're gonna do the same thing that we just did using a new piece of yarn. You can attach your yarn to the cuff of the sleeve down here at the very corner um, at the very first stitch, you can slip stitch to join and then slip stitch up the cuff and then continue slip stitching all the way up the length of the arm of the sweater working through the ends of the rows. And then when you get to the underarm area, keep going and work your way down the side of the sweater and back down the ribbing and the hem of the bottom of the sweater. And then you're going to have to tie off and repeat that exact same thing on the other side with your second sleeve. So once your sleeves are seamed on, we're gonna make the pocket inserts. So to do that, just grab your hook and a new piece of yarn and then create a slip knot. And then we're gonna start off by working the first row. So for that, I did a foundation double crochet. So for the foundation double crochet, you're gonna chain three and then yarn over. And in the back bump of that very first chain that you made is where you will be putting your hook. Then yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the final two, and that is one foundation double crochet. And then you just repeat that again, putting your hook in the bottom of that first stitch you made and repeat the same process. And you're gonna do this for a total of 18 foundation double crochet. Now again, if you don't like to do the foundation stitches, you can chain 20 and work one double crochet in the third chain from the hook and in each chain across for a total of 18 double crochet stitches. So once you have a total of 18 double crochet, that completes the first row. And for this part, we're only going to be chaining two and turning our work, and that's what we're going to be doing for the pockets is only chaining two, and the chain two does not count as a stitch at, for this part. So go ahead and work a double crochet into that very same spot because the chain two does not count for the pockets. And then just work one double crochet in each stitch across for a total of 18 double crochet. So you'll have 18 double crochet, and then you're gonna do this for a total of 10 rows. Chain two, work your stitches, and work a total of 10 rows like I have here. And then don't tie off because now we're going to be doing the trim of the pocket so you can chain one and turn your work. And for the trim, we're only doing one round and in that very first stitch, work one single crochet and then just work one single crochet into each stitch all the way across the top of the pocket until you get to the last stitch of the row. 
So when you get to the last stitch, you're just gonna be working three single crochet into the same spot. So here's my first, and then in that very same stitch, work a second, and then again, work a third. So that just helps us to turn the corner so that we can work single crochet stitches evenly down the side. And so for the sides, it's really not super important how many stitches you do, just as long as you try and keep it even and make sure that it's not wavy or bunched up. I did approximately two single crochet stitches per row to reach the bottom. So just work your stitches evenly until you get to that bottom corner and then I will show you guys how to do that second corner. So once you reach the very bottom corner, we're gonna be working three single crochet into that edge stitch of the bottom of the pocket. So just work three stitches into the same spot to help us turn our work again. And then you just work one single crochet into each stitch across the bottom. And when you reach the next corner, you work three single crochet into it. And this helps rotate it again so that we can work our way back up the last side of the pocket. So now just work your stitches up the side. And then when you reach the very end, work two more single crochet into the same spot that your first single crochet was. So now you'll have three single crochet in that corner. And then in the very first stitch that you made, you can just slip stitch to join. So yarn over and just pull through. Again, the exact stitch count for this is not crucial to the pattern. This is just a nice, clean trim that we're gonna use to sew the pocket on. It's gonna be on the inside of the sweater, and I just found it easier to have actual stitches to work our needle in as we sewed the pocket. So make sure when you tie off, you leave a nice long length to sew all the way around the perimeter of the pocket. So once you have one made, you're gonna to need to go back and make a second one for both sides of the front panel. And then after that, we're gonna sew them to the sweater. So we're, we're gonna have our sweater facing us wrong side up. So this is the inside of the front panel facing me here. And when we sew the pocket on, we're going to be sewing this top um, row of the single crochet trim to the stitches of the chain 18 that we did when we chained 18 and skipped that chain 18, we're gonna be sewing into the bottom of those. So just make sure that you're sewing it to the right spot. You want to make sure that you don't accidentally close your pocket up because we want a hole in the front for the pocket. So when you're doing the top, you're gonna to line it up evenly and sew this top row to the chain 18 and then work your way down the side, across the bottom and back up to the top again. So we're gonna be doing all four sides of the pocket, making sure that we don't accidentally sew it to the um, opening of the pocket on the front. So go ahead and take your needle and then I will show you how I did it. You can sew it on however you're most comfortable with doing as long as you're doing all four sides. I also recommend um, to use stitch markers to help keep everything in place. I ended up placing stitch markers in the corners just to hold it as I went, but I wanted to show you the top part. Um, I recommend starting at the top of the pocket and um, doing that side first before you work the sides in the bottom. So you can put it into the corner stitch of the pocket and then line it up with the corner of the chain 18 and then just pull through both of those. And then you're just gonna continue stitching across the top, working in the stitch following right after it. And then line it up with the chain 18 above it. And then just pull all the way through and I ended up doing this all the way across. And then when you reach the corner, just work your way down. And then when you reach the bottom, work across. It can be a little tricky at some points um, when you are working down the sides because of the little bead stitches. You might have to maneuver your needle to try and find a spot to stick it in so that the uh, tail isn't visible from the front, but it ended up working out really easily and it's pretty simple to do once you get going.
So once you've worked your way around all four sides of the pocket, this is what it looks like on the front. And here it is on the inside. So super easy to do. You just go all four sides. And then once you're done with that, you can just um, weave your end in. So I like to just go down and then back up two or three times, depending um, on what you're comfortable doing. I like to do two or three times. And then you're going to want to do this with all the ends. You're going to want to weave all of them in. If you haven't already and then we also have to work the trim of the cardigan still so you can save your ends um, for the very end if you want to and I will show you really quick how to add the super simple single crochet trim around the front of the cardigan. So to do the trim, you're just gonna grab a new piece of yarn and we are gonna use our hook and just slip stitch to join to the very bottom corner of the cardigan. So you'll want your cardigan facing right side out and then that front left panel or the right panel when worn is where we're going to be putting our hook. So in that very bottom corner of the ribbing down in the um, bottom of the front panel, just slip stitch into that very first stitch to join. So go through both loops and then just slip stitch in, chain one and then work a single crochet into that very same spot and work a single crochet into the remaining nine stitches of the ribbing. And then you can just continue up the side of the front panel working your single crochet stitches and across the back neckline and then back down the second front panel until you get to the bottom corner of the ribbing on the opposite side. And when you get to the bottom, just chain one and turn and then work one single crochet in each stitch back across. And then when you get back here to this corner, chain one and turn again, and then just repeat that one more time with one single crochet per stitch all the way across. So a total of three rows of just single crochet. And you can see here when you get to the first row that you're doing, I'm just working my stitches around that chain or around the entire double crochet stitch depending on which end of the row I'm on. And it's super easy. I did about two single crochet per row and then just do this all the way across. And that is it for this pattern. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I will catch you guys in the next tutorial.